I, I hope that you enjoy art as much as I do. Look at this beautiful uh, painting that I purchased some years back, actually, and uh, it really is a, is a masterpiece. And, I, and actually, it reminds me of a question where we can actually use lines to model interesting things, even in the art world. And so I wanted to share it with you. So I had this painting appraised uh, three and seven years after I purchased it. And the estimated value was $31,000. Could you imagine that for that painting? That's how important that painting is. And then $39,000. So $31,000 uh, three years, and then uh, seven years later, $39,000. What we're supposed to do, our challenge is to model the painting's value over time with a linear equation in slope-intercept form. And then we want to explain the significance of the slope and the y-intercept in, in this particular context. And then there's some interesting challenges. Once we have that model, can we use that model to predict the value of the painting 10 years after I purchased it? And then according to the model, uh, how long would I have to wait in order to have the value be at $75,000, which is when, by the way, I will retire. Okay, so first let's just start with the basics here. What we know is that th three years after I purchased the, the work of art, it was worth $31,000, and then seven years later, uh, seven years from when I purchased it, it was worth $39,000. So we want to model this with a, with a straight line, so we have to do a, a bunch of things. We first will have to find the slope, and you know how to find slope. It's the change in y over the change in x, or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. You know, look, we know this stuff. So let's try to actually see if we can compute some of these things. So, to find the slope, I'm going to look at the change in the, the y values uh, and then divide it by the change in the x values. Now, by the way, you might say, now how did I know that the years were x values? Like, why isn't it flipped, you know, 31, 3, and 39, 7, and so forth? Well, so let me just tell you why. Because we always put the independent variable on the x-axis. The independent variable means the thing that you can't control, the thing that is unchanging. In usually in any kind of real world applications that tends to be time. Okay, So time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. You can't stop it, you can't come back to it, and so forth. So the, at different times that will, de that will determine the value of the painting. And so the y is the dependent. And that's why, if you look back here, you see that I've got the time being x and the, um, and the y representing the value at that time. Okay, so change in y, that's gonna be 39,000 minus uh, 31,000, which is uh, 8,000. I'm just gonna write it right down there. You can see 39 minus 31 is 8,000. And then I divide that by the change here, which is seven minus three, which is four. And so what is that equal to? Well, that equals to 2,000. So the slope is 2,000. And what does that mean? What does it mean to have a slope of 2,000? It means that um, the, the painting is appreciating at a rate of $2,000 per year. And you can see that for yourself, because what are the units? The units here are dollars, and the units here are years. And so this is dollars per year. So it means that the value of the painting is going up, appreciating, at $2,000 per year. That's what the slope means. It's the change. Okay, terrific. Now what we want to do is we want to write the equation for this, for this bad boy. So what are we going to do? I'm going to take out a big piece of paper. And I'm going to use my favorite point-slope form. I know that's not what they're asking, but I don't care what they're asking because I'm doing the talking. So we're going to start off by remembering that it's... Oh, I have it right here. In fact, look at this. How nice. It is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1, y1 is a particular value that we know satisfies the line, and m represents the slope. So in this case, you could pick either of these values. I'll pick the first one. So y minus this value, 31,000, is going to equal the slope, which we just figured out to be 2,000, times x minus the x corresponding x value, which is 3. So x minus 3. Okay, so there's the, the graph of that. And now it really did ask for us to, to write this thing in slope-intercept form. So we have to now solve this for, for y. So no problem. Uh, I think I'll just distribute this while I'm here. The 2,000 over 
hits the x, but it also hits the negative 3, so that's going to be minus 6,000. Don't forget to distribute. And then if I want to solve this for y, all I've got to do is add 31,000 to both sides, and if I do that, I see 2,000x, and then if I take and add 31,000 to both sides, I see 31,000 minus 6,000 is plus 25,000. And there it is in uh, slope intercept form. y equals 2,000x plus 25,000. And so what does the, the y intercept mean? What, is, what does that correspond to? Well, that, that corresponds to the y value when x is 0. And remember, x represents time or years, which means that tells me what the value of the painting was at time 0, which means when I purchased it. So the value of the painting when I purchased it was, in fact, $25,000. That's the interpretation of that. Cool. All right. Now that we've got this, we can actually use this model to do all sorts of cool things. So let's do a couple of cool things. So the first thing the question challenges us to, to answer is um, predict the value of the painting 10 years after uh, its purchase. Well, 10 years, that's an x value. X is time. So I want to know what's the value of this thing when x equals 10. So all you do is you plug in x equals 10. So y, that's the value, equals 2,000 times 10 plus 25,000. And what is that? Well, this is going to be 20,000. Well, I'm liking this. Plus 25,000 because the reason why I like this, of course, See, the answer is 45000 but you know why I like it? I get to put a dollar sign in front of it. So $45,000 is the value of my painting 10 years after I purchased it. Awesome. And then let's try one more challenge, which is um, if we assume the linear model continues, um, how many years would I have to wait in order to have the value of the painting be at $75,000? Now think about it. Now we're given the dollar amount. We want to find the time amount. That means I'm given y, I've got to find x. You see, you've got to really keep track of all the characters in this little story here. In this case, we now know that this has to be 75,000, and I want to find out how long I have to wait for that payday. So I'm solving for x. Subtract 25,000 from each side, I get 50,000 equals uh, 2,000x. Divide both sides by 2,000. And what do I see? I see doop, doop, doop. I see 25 equals x. And so 25 years, that's how long I'll have to wait in order for this masterpiece to be worth $75,000. This, my friend, is my retirement. So your retirement should be the knowledge of mathematics because mathematics allows you to actually model the real world things, whether it's art or economics or anything else. We can see the world in a richer, more beautiful way. Isn't this great? I love it. So I can't wait to, oh, 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 shh. Okay, I guess I have to stick to math and that will be where my investment will be. I'll see you soon.